how he Brother, was justified. Real quick, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you because you were just speaking on something. Uh, do you, are you of the – I know this might be a long teaching for you, but just real quick, your quick opinion. It, do you believe Joseph is the father or not? Are you asking me from my personal perspective? <laughs> or based, based upon scripture, based upon your understanding of scripture. Um, well, that's a that's a multifaceted question. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you my subscription. I don't subscribe to the virgin birth, um, and I don't because I don't just look at what we have today known as the Bible. I look through history, and I do what's called textual criticism, which means that I look at all the available evidence because there's not one manuscript for the New Testament, just like there's not one manuscript for the Tanakh or the Torah. There's thousands of manuscripts, thousands. I've went through a couple of hundred. I haven't gone through all the thousands. It's just very overwhelming to do. And I do so many other things. I never have the time to do it. But I went through hundreds from various text-type families. And upon examining them, I realized that the virgin birth story is not consistent in all of these manuscripts, which means that it is one of many traditions but it is the tradition that survives in the Greek translation. If you read, um, if you read uh, the works of Jerome, in 393 A.D., Jerome wrote a dissertation. And in Jerome's dissertation, he says, we know that the book of Matthew was originally written in the Hebrew tongue and authored by Matthew. But the Greek translation, we don't know who wrote it. We don't know who translated it. We have no clue. This is what Jerome said. And Jerome is responsible for helping the Vulgate develop. So mm. he even knew during his time he had a copy of the book of Matthew in Hebrew. And he had the Greek manuscripts. And he knew from what was told to him by the Nazarenes, who was one of those sects of Jewish Christianity. And in the 4th century, they converted to Except the virgin birth. You know why? Because after the Nicene Council occurred, there were several other councils that happened after that. And now this Christianity ideology has now gained political favor, which means that now somebody's theology can be enforced by the sword. So that means if you believe or subscribe to something that's contrary to the state religion, you will be put to death, you will be excommunicated, and your works will be burnt and destroyed. So now these sects that were not killed off, had to convert and either be Christians or convert and either be Yahudim. There's no in-between. You had to be one of the polar opposites. So, so I say that, brother, to answer your question, to say my subscription is based on looking at all the available data that I have at my disposal and from there inducing. That means I'm not coming from a point of a presuppositional idea meaning I already have a doctrine formulated in my head before I look at the evidence. I flush that, I take into account all the evidence, and from there I work my way up to a hypothesis, and from a hypothesis to a thesis, and from that conclusion I pray on it, and the Most High confirms it to me. So my stance is I don't subscribe to the virgin birth because I've looked at a myriad of evidence that a lot, or data that a lot of people are not looking at because they are not aware that it exists. So my ministry is designed to bring these things to light so people can look at the same thing that I'm looking at and come to their own conclusions, whatever the Most High convicts you to do. So I'm not saying the virgin birth is wrong altogether. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, based on my research and the data that I've acclimated and assessed and analyzed, I see that it is not a consistent tradition, and it has only been consistent through Gentile converts. And Gentile converts mm. are the ones that promoted this ideology. I'm going to show you something real deep, and, I'm, and, and, and this will just touch on that real quick because I know it's, it's a sidetrack, but it's a good sidetrack. Whoever translated the book of Matthew did not read the Hebrew manuscript. Whoever translated the book of Matthew into Koine Greek, because if we have several church fathers, Epiphanes is another one, who all say the original book of Hebrew was written, uh, Matthew was written in Hebrew. They don't, they don't argue or disagree. They all agree it was originally written, but we have also some Greek translation that's floating around. <laughs> they just have it. Jerome said we don't know who wrote it. Go look it up if you don't believe me. Jerome said we don't know who translated this. We have no clue. So whoever mm-hmm. translated that did not read the Hebrew. Whoever translated that translated it 
and their understanding was based on the Septuagint. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. These original followers who were called Jewish Christians, especially, more particularly the Ebionites, you can go look up the Gospel of the Ebionites. This is what they coined the phrase Christianity. They call it the Gospel of the Ebionites, but that's not true. They say it's a corrupted version of the Hebrew book of Matthew, which is not true. But I don't have enough time to actually go into it. But if you read it, you'll see that they don't even have Matthew chapter 1, verse 17, on the story. They just don't have that section there in their Hebrew uh, version. It picks up at verse 3, I mean chapter 3. It has none of that virgin birth story. Stuff. None of that is in, their, in, in the Hebrew manuscripts that those Ebionites had in their possession. They didn't have none of that. It, it was the same way that we have the book of Mark. And the book of Mark doesn't have the virgin birth story in it. The book of John doesn't have the verse birth. Matter of fact, the epistles of Shaul or Paul, who was the largest proponent of promoting the deity of Yahusha, he never mentions the virgin birth. And when we do textual analysis of the text in, in, in the scholarly realm, they've determined that the Pauline epistles is earlier than the synoptic gospels and the book of Yachin on John. So if, we, if, if, if Paul's writings precedes the laying down of the synoptic gospels and he does not mention a virgin birth, that means that there is more than one tradition that is being maintained concurrently or simultaneously. I'm of the tradition that that was an interpolation by the translator of the Greek manuscript based on what I've assessed and the data that I have acclimated. And I have a lecture coming up where I give out all my information. It's called Immaculate Deception. And I give out all that information that I have so you can sift through the same things that I, I sifted through and see if you come to the same conclusion or a different one. Whatever it is, that's your personal conviction with the Most High. I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. I'm just showing you what I looked at and what convinced me to stand on what I subscribe to be the truth, right? And, I, and, I, and I'm very careful with my words. What I subscribe to be the truth. I never definitely speak on behalf of the Most High because I can change in two, five years from now because the Most High reveals something to me or I come across something new. So I tell you where I stand today and based on my research, subscription, and being led as much as I am to this information, I don't subscribe to the virgin birth because in Matthew chapter 1, going to verse 18 on, again, Matthew chapter 1 to 17, if you go to the, and I'm going to give you a reference, if you go to the Sinatic, the Syriac Sinaticus, look it up, Syriac, S-Y-R-I-A-C, Sinaticus, S-I-N-A-I-T-I-C-U-S. That is a manuscript that is written in the Syriac, just like the Peshitta, it's written in the Syriac, in the Syriac. When you read Matthew chapter one verse seventeen, there, you know what it says: Yosef begot Yahusha. But when you read Matthew chapter one verse seventeen and the Greek manuscript, it don't say that. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. And do you know where the majority of the manuscripts that our English translation is translated from? The Byzantine text type. Do you know what the Byzantine text type is? It's what's called the majority text. And do you know when that became popular? During the Middle Ages, when Christianity moved its home base to Byzantium in Turkey. So by the time we get to Byzantium in Turkey, we have interpolations in manuscripts that we don't find in the Alexandrian text type, which is much earlier, which is found in Alexandrian Egypt. So when they moved a different Ideology started to e e e emerge because there were successive councils with rulings on creeds that was put out forth by the Roman Catholic Church. And the manuscripts had to align themselves with these rulings. And then from those Byzantium text type family manuscripts came the majority text, which was what's called the received text. The Texas Receptus, which is a, a, a Greek manuscript that was based on Stephanos, Beza, and Erasmus, and their Greek manuscripts. The translators looked at all these Greek manuscripts and the Vulgate, and what they decided was, okay, if we look at all these manuscripts, how can we craft up the best Greek manuscript? They created the Texas Receptus using textual criticism methods over several manuscripts, and from that they translated it into the King James 
1611 Bible that you have today. Most people don't read the preface, so they don't know this stuff. When you don't read the preface, the first thing I read in the book is the preface. It's there for a reason. The preface gives you the will and intent of why this book is being written. It tells you why. <laughs> why did we translate it this way? Why did we do what we do? All the information is there. We just never read it. We go straight to the Bible. So what I'm saying is, what we have is a tradition that comes from the Byzantium text-type family, and that there are other manuscripts that do not agree with it. And they are earlier than these Byzantium text-type manuscript families. Family, what I'm telling you is very important, and a lot of people, unfortunately, 